Assalamu alaikum everybody. Welcome today to my YouTube channel, Anatomy Mentor. And today's topic is the overview on the gross anatomy of the anterior compartment of the thigh. Now, in today's session, we will be discussing the muscles, their nerve supply, their action, their attachments, those present in the anterior compartment of the thigh. Also, we'll discuss the blood supply and the branches of the arteries in this compartment. We will also explain the boundaries, the contents and clinical significance of the femoral triangle. So let's start with today's topic with discussion on the facial skeleton. Now, what is the facial skeleton? If we observe the lower limb, we know that the deep fascia over here forms a tough circumferential stocking, which constrains the musculature. This is known as the fascia lata of the lower limb. And then the septi, they pass from the deep surface of this fascia lata to the bones. And this divides the muscles into several compartments or groups. These are also known as osteofacial compartments. The deep fascia, that is the fascia lata, gives an additional attachment for the muscles and it is thickened laterally to form the iliotibial tract. So here is a diagram in front of you. And if you follow the pointer, the arrowhead over here, you can see that this is showing us the fascia lata, which has surrounded the lower limb in the form of a circumferential stocking. So look at the pointer now and on the lateral aspect of the thigh, you can see there is a thickening of this fascia lata and here it is called the iliotibial tract. Also in the upper aspect of the anterior side, you can see this here is the saphenous opening, which is filled by the fibriform fascia. Now let's come to the muscles of the uh, lower limb. The muscles, they might be divided into iliac and gluteal region muscles, then those of the thigh, the leg and the foot. Now, focusing on the thigh, we know that it is subdivided into three osteofacial compartments. And these three compartments are anterior, posterior and medial. Now, functionally in the thigh, remember that the anterior compartment is the extensor compartment. The medial one is the adductor compartment whereas the posterior one is the flexor compartment. Now here is a general rule in case of muscles of the lower limb. The general rule is that the anterior aspect of the adult limb is the extensor aspect, whereas the flexors lie posteriorly. So over here, we're talking about those muscles of the thigh which are acting on the knee joint. So the extensors of the knee joint lie on the anterior aspect of the thigh, whereas the flexors of the knee joint lie on the posterior aspect of the thigh. Remember the reverse is true at the hip. So when we are talking about the hip joint, those muscles which are the flexors of the hip joint, namely the iliosaurus muscle, they are present on the anterior aspect, whereas the extensor of the hip joint, the gluteus maximus muscle, that is present on the posterior aspect. Now here in front of you is a transverse section through the middle of the right thigh. And over here, this is the lateral aspect. And if you follow the laser pointer, you can see this is the medial aspect. This is the cross section through the femur bone. On the posterior aspect of the bone is a ridge known as the linea aspera. This linear aspera provides attachment to muscles as well as the septa. So these here partitions in green, you can see these are the septa. And they are reaching this enclosure of fascia, which is the fascia lata, which we just talked about, the deep fascia of the thigh. And you can see on the lateral aspect, this fascia lata is taken to form the iliotibial tract. Now from this fascia lata, these septi pass inwards and are attached to the femur bone. And the two main ones are this lateral and this here medial septi. 
The lateral one is the thicker one, which separates the vastus lateralis muscle in front from the biceps femoris muscle behind. And it also provides partial attachment to these muscles. Then you can see here is the medial septum, which separates the vastus medialis in front from the adductor muscles behind. And this is the thinner one, but there are also other septi. You can see this septum is present between the adductors and flexors of the thigh region. So you can see over here that this cross section is showing us how the septi have divided the muscles into different osteofacial compartments. Now, moving on, let's summarize the contents of the anterior facial compartment of the thigh. These are muscles, namely sartorius, iliacus, sos major, pectineus, and quadriceps femoris. The blood supply is by femoral artery and nerve supply is femoral nerve. Now let's look at these muscles one by one. Sartorius. Sartorius is a strap-like muscle, which is the meaning of its name. Because of its, uh, you can see, morphology, its origin is from the anterosuperior ilex spine of the hip bone. And from the lateral aspect, it travels towards the medial aspect and is inserted into the tibia on the upper medial surface of the tibia. This sartorius muscle flexes and abducts and laterally rotates the thigh at the hip joint and it also flexes the leg at the knee joint with medial rotation. So remember it is a flexor of both the hip and the knee joints but when we talk about rotation these are in opposite directions. You could say the hip at the hip joint, the rotation is lateral and at the knee joint, the rotation is medial. And you can remember that by looking at its attachments over here at the hip joint, you can see in this region, its origin is lateral. And when we talk about the knee joint, its origin is its insertion, sorry, its insertion is on the medial side. So, Another action to be kept in mind is the abduction, which it performs at the hip joint. The sartorius is also going to form the lateral boundary of the femoral triangle. So here in the upper anterior aspect of the uh, thigh, you can see that this sartorius muscle, it is forming the lateral boundary of the femoral triangle. Now, Remember, it is the medial border of sartorius which forms the lateral boundary of the femoral triangle. Sos major and iliacus. Now, these muscles are, like I mentioned before, the major flexors of the hip joint. Their origin is from the lumbar spine and inner surface of ilium, respectively, to the lesser trochanter of the femur. And the sos minor sometimes is present, which runs from the lumbar spine to the pubis part of the hip bone. So here you can see these muscles. The sos major, like I said, its origin is from the lumbar part of the vertebral column from the transverse processes and vertebral bodies. And its insertion is into the lesser trochanter of the femur. Here is the iliacus muscle. Its origin is from the iliac fossa of the hip bone. And it is also inserted along with source major into the lesser trochanter. This now is the source major muscle. If present, its origin is from lumbar spine and it is inserted into the pubis of the hip bone. Now, this is a table which summarizes the origin, insertion, nerve supply, and action of these muscles of the uh, anterior aspect of the thigh. And over here we see that the sartorius is supplied by femoral nerve, iliacus is also supplied by femoral nerve, sos is supplied by the lumbar plexus. And when we talk about the action of iliacus and sos, they flex the thigh on the trunk and they also flex the trunk on the thigh as would happen if a person sits up from the supine position. 
Here's another muscle pectineus, which is present in the anterior compartment of the thigh. Its origin is from the, <clears throat> its origin is from the superior ramus of the pubis, and it is inserted into the upper end of linea aspera of shaft of the femur. Now, this is a muscle which flexes the thigh at the hip joint and it also adducts the thigh at the hip joint. So because it is also an adductor of the thigh at the hip joint, it can also be considered to be a muscle of the medial compartment of the thigh. So here is the pectineus and its origin, like I said, you can see from the hip bone and insertion is into upper end of linea aspera of femur. Now let's come to the giant muscle, the main muscle of the anterior compartment of thigh, that is the quadriceps femoris. We know it's a powerful extensor of the knee and it is consisting of four muscles, which are the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis, lateralis, and intermedius. Now these are the four parts of quadriceps femoris. That's why it is called quadriceps because these are the four parts which make up this muscle. Now, the first part of the muscle, which is rectus femoris, this is anterior in position. And remember, it is the only member of the quadriceps femoris that is attached to the hip bone. So here is its origin from the hip bone from the antero-inferior iliac spine. And you can see this rectus femoris muscle is then attached via a tendon to the patella bone present on the anterior aspect of the knee. This rectus femoris arises from two heads of origin. The first I told you is the straight head, which is arising from the antero-inferior eyelid spine, whereas the other one is the reflected head, which is present just superior to acetabulum. And we know it is inserted into the patella via this strong quadriceps tendon. Whereas the second part of quadriceps, which is vastus medialis, it lies beneath the rectus femoris. So this here is the vastus medialis and it lies beneath the rectus femoris. If you look at its origin, it is from the posterior aspect of shaft of femur from the linear aspera as well as the medial supracondylar ridge. And then it wraps itself around the medial aspect of the femur. Eventually, it will be inserted into the patella via the quadriceps tendon. So here you can see this is vastus medialis and it is lying beneath this muscle, which was the rectus femoris. Now the third part of quadriceps femoris, that is vastus lateralis, this arises from also the posterior aspect of femur linea aspera, but in this case, the adjoining origin is from the lateral supracondylar ridge of the femur. Now this muscle also wraps itself around the femoral shaft, but this time it's going to be on the lateral side and it will be inserted into the lateral border of the patella and of course it will blend with the quadriceps tendon. So here is this prominent muscle on the lateral aspect of front of thigh and this is the vastus lateralis. Now the fourth and last part of quadriceps femoris is the vastus intermedius. This is deeply placed and its origin is from the anterior and lateral surfaces of the femur, and its fibers end in a superficial aponeurosis, which forms the deep part of quadriceps tendon. So eventually, all the four parts of the quadriceps femoris muscle, they are going to be attached to the patella, and then via the ligamentum patelli, they are going to be eventually inserted, their line of action, as you can see, will be attached to the tibial tuberosity on the upper end of the tibia bone. So these are the four parts of quadriceps femoris summarized in a table. And you can see that the femoral nerve supplies these four parts and the actions in addition to the extension of the uh, le leg at the knee joint should be kept in mind. And you can see over here that the rectus femoris, since it is the only part of quadriceps attached to the hip bone, it also flexes the thigh at the hip joint. So this is an additional function to be kept in mind that rectus femoris flexes the thigh at the hip joint. And then when we look at vastus medialis, remember it also stabilizes the patella. And when we talk about the vastus intermedius, remember 
Uh, it has a part which is known as particularis genus, and this functions to retract the synovial membrane during movements of the knee joint. Okay, so a few key points which we want to keep in mind about uh, these muscles is that the rectus femoris and three vasti, they extend the knee through a common tendon and therefore they are collectively called quadriceps femoris. Also, the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh, these two, the sartorius and rectus femoris, they can act on both hip and knee joints. Whereas the vastus lateralis, medialis and intermedius act only on the knee. Articularis genus is the derivative of vastus intermedius, which retracts the ovule membrane during movements of the knee joint. And adductor longus and pectineus, these two muscles are sometimes considered to be part of both the anterior and medial compartments of the thigh. This is because their location uh, makes them, uh, you can consider them a part of the anterior compartment of the thigh, but based on their function, you can consider them to be a part of the medial compartment of the thigh. So here is a very simple color-coded diagram which is summarizing the muscles of anterior compartment of the thigh. In yellow, you can see the rectus femoris and beneath it, you can see over here is the vastus medialis. And then in blue, you can see the vastus lateralis. And here is the purple strap-like muscle, which is sartorius, passing from the lateral to medial aspect. And in the upper part of the anterior aspect of the thigh, we can see the pectineus. Here is the source major and the iliacus, right? So these are the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh. And sometimes the source minor might be present. Now the cutaneous innervation. If we talk about the cutaneous innervation, uh, there are several nerves which are going to give the sensory supply to the skin of the anterior aspect of the thigh. Starting from above, let's look at these nerves, the ilioinguinal nerve and also the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. The ilioinguinal nerve is the branch of the anterior ramus of the first lumbar spinal nerve. And we know that the genitofemoral nerve, it arises from the anterior rami of L1 and L2. And in the lateral aspect, you've got a branch of the 12th thoracic nerve as well. And on the main region of the thigh, you have medial cutaneous, intermediate cutaneous, and lateral cutaneous, as, uh, as well as the obturator nerve on the medial aspect of the thigh. And here is the patellar plexus, which is the plexus of nerves formed on the anterior aspect of the knee by contributing branches of the surrounding cutaneous nerves. Let's come to blood supply of anterior compartment of thigh. We know the main blood vessel supplying this compartment is the femoral artery. Now, where does this femoral artery come from? This femoral artery is simply the continuation of external iliac artery, as you can see beneath this inguinal ligament. External artery is one of the two branches of the common iliac and this external iliac when it forms you can see the femoral artery it continues into the uh, thigh and it gives off a very important branch a thick branch which is known as the profunda artery. The word profunda it means deep because it is deeply placed. This gives off uh, further branches, which are medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries, as well as the perforating branches. The femoral artery itself, which is the artery of the thigh, it continues on the posterior aspect of the knee, where now it is known as the popliteal artery. And then you can see in the region of the leg, it divides into these two branches, which are anterior and posterior tibial arteries. Here is the anterior tibial, which continues in the anterior aspect of the leg and foot. On the foot, it forms the dorsalis medius artery. Whereas the posterior tibial artery, it is present in the posterior compartment of the leg, and then it passes behind the medial malleolus to reach the sole of the foot. Now that we've talked about the basic anatomy of the anterior aspect of the thigh, let's discuss the very important region which is present in the upper part of the medial aspect of the thigh, just below the inguinal ligament. This is a depressed area known as the femoral triangle. 
the boundaries of this triangle are like I told you before, the lateral boundary, this is formed by the medial boundary of sartorius. So here's the sartorius muscle. You can see its medial boundary is forming the lateral boundary of this femoral triangle. And the uh, medial boundary of this triangle is formed by the medial border of adductor longus. So keep in mind, the medial border of adductor longus forms the medial boundary of the triangle, which means that the adductor longus muscle itself is present in the floor of this femoral triangle. And this triangle, its base is present upwards, and that is simply formed by inguinal ligament, whereas the medial and lateral boundaries, they unite inferiorly to form the apex of this triangle. And if we look at the muscles which are present in the floor of this triangle, then medially, I told you, it's the adductor longus, and then comes the pectineus, the source major, and the iliacus. So these are the muscles present in the floor of femoral triangle from the medial to lateral aspect. And here you can see that the lateral boundary of this triangle is formed by the medial border of sartorius. And the medial boundary of femoral triangle is formed by the medial border of adductor longus. Present in the roof is simply the skin and superficial and deep facial. What are the contents of femoral triangle? The femoral triangle contains the very important femoral vessels as well as the femoral nerve. Now from the medial to lateral aspect, we see first comes the femoral vein, then the femoral artery, and then femoral nerve. So you can remember this by the simple mnemonic, which is V-A-N. V, A, N for vein, artery, and nerve from the medial to lateral aspect. Also to note over here is that there is a femoral sheath, which is a covering surrounding the femoral vessels. But the femoral nerve is not present within the femoral sheath. Also present in the femoral triangle are the deep inguinal lymph nodes. So let's talk about the femoral sheath. This is an extension of abdominal fascia downwards into the thigh to form a covering or a funnel around the femoral vessels and lymphatics. And the femoral sheath extends for about an inch below the inguinal ligament and its anterior wall is formed by fascia transversalis, whereas its posterior wall is formed by fascia iliaca. And this femoral sheath now is further subdivided into three compartments, the lateral, intermediate, and medial. The medial most compartment of the femoral sheath is called the femoral canal, and its upper opening is called the femoral ring. Whereas femoral septum is simply the condensation of extra peritoneal tissue that closes the femoral ring. So now we've talked about these different terminologies. Let me summarize them. I mentioned the femoral sheath, then I've mentioned the femoral canal, the femoral ring, and the femoral septum, right? What is the femoral sheath? It is simply the medial most compartment uh, that is there. Uh, sorry, the femoral sheath is simply the covering which is surrounding the vessels, and the medial most compartment is the femoral canal. This femoral canal, its upper aspect is known as femoral ring, and it is filled up with the femoral septum. If you look at these diagrams from Snell's Regional Anatomy, we can see here is the femoral sheath. It is surrounding the vessels which are femoral artery, femoral vein, and also the lymphatic vessels. And here is a better view in which we can see these femoral vessels surrounded by the femoral sheath. And we can also see the medial most compartment or portion of femoral sheath, which I told you is the femoral canal, and its upper aspect, which is in the form of a ring, which is called the femoral ring. Okay, and then in the next diagram over here, you can see that in profile, you can see that the anterior wall of this Femoral sheath is formed by fascia transversalis, which continues from the abdominal wall. Whereas the posterior wall of this femoral sheath is formed by the fascia iliacum. You can also see the lymphatics and the lymph node within this femoral canal. 
So if we simplify it into uh, a, a schematic diagram, we can see this in green. This is the femoral sheath containing femoral artery, vein, and this is the uh, lymph node of Cloquet or Rosenmiller, which is present in femoral canal. And if we take a cross section over here, we can very easily appreciate these three compartments of femoral sheath, the lateral, intermediate, and medial compartment. And in the lateral compartment, remember, along with the femoral artery is also present the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. Whereas in the medial compartment, we can see it contains the, simply the lymph node. And here, this is known as femoral canal. Now, the upper part of the femoral canal, which is the femoral ring, its boundaries are important. And we have to keep those in mind. Now, these boundaries are laterally, we know lateral to it lies the femoral vein, and medial to it is the lacunar ligament. The lacunar ligament can be defined as the sharp free edge of pectineal part of the inguinal ligament. So let's look at this diagram over here. Here is the femoral canal, lateral to it is the femoral vein, and medial to it is this lacunar ligament, which is the sharp free edge of the inguinal ligament. Anteriorly, of course, is the inguinal ligament and posteriorly is the pectineal ligament. Now, what is the pectineal ligament? It is thickened periosteum present along the pectineal border of superior pubic ramus. Now we're going to come to the applied aspects since we've discussed the femoral triangle and uh, we've discussed the femoral sheath and canal. But before coming to femoral hernia, I would like to first talk about uh, the site of taking the femoral pulse. Because we talked about femoral artery, where are we going to take the femoral pulse? For this, a landmark is used. The landmark is the mid inguinal point. So you place your fingers on the mid inguinal point to palpate for the femoral pulse. And this mid inguinal point is located beneath the inguinal ligament at a point which is halfway between the anterosuperior ilex spine and the pubic symphysis. This is the landmark for the femoral artery. But remember this point is not to be confused with another landmark, which is the middle inguinal point, also known as the midpoint of inguinal ligament. Now, what is the midpoint of inguinal ligament? This is simply located halfway between anterosuperior ilex spine and pubic tubercle. And it is the uh, point which is lateral to mid inguinal point. So it marks the position of the femoral nerve. If you look over here, I'm going to show you both of these points. So let's look at first the mid inguinal point where I told you we can check for the femoral pulse. This mid inguinal point is present on this region which is marked by the cross. And this region is halfway between this line which is joining the anterosuperior ilex spine to the pubic synthesis. And here is the midpoint of inguinal ligament, which is the point halfway between anterosuperior ilex spine and pubic tubercle. This is lateral to mid inguinal point, and this marks the position of the femoral nerve. Okay, now let's come to femoral hernia. So you know what a hernia is. It is the protrusion of contents through a space, the abnormal protrusion of the contents. Now, when we talk about femoral hernia, we mean that the abdominal contents, uh, they have protruded through the femoral ring and through the femoral canal. This uh, type of hernia is more common in women because they have a wider pelvis and a wider femoral canal. But if we uh, look at the neck of the sac, remember that is narrow and it lies at the femoral ring. The location of the neck of the sac is always below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. So this differentiates it from the inguinal hernia. And also keep in mind, this is an irreducible hernia because the neck of the sac is narrow. It is difficult to reduce the, or we could say, return the abdominal contents back through this uh, exit point. And do you know in such hernias, if a patient is coughing or straining, this will worsen the hernia. It will cause, as you can see over here, you can see the intestinal loops to protrude through the femoral canal. And 
in worse situations, this could lead to strangulation of the hernia. When we say strangulation, we mean that a portion of the gut has become impacted to the point that the blood vessels are constricted, causing ischemia, and that can cause gangrene and necrosis of the tissue. So in that case, it's a surgical emergency. And since I told you this hernia is irreducible, it can be relieved by excising or cutting the lacunar ligament. While doing this procedure, the surgeon has to be careful not to cut or damage the abnormal obturator artery, which might be present over here. So if it is present, the artery needs to be located and ligated before excising the lacunar ligament. Butcher's thigh, I uh, mentioned that before, we, uh, we call this region, uh, we know this region is a very sensitive region, the region of the femoral triangle because it contains the femoral vessels. So if there is any penetrating injury over here, some traumatic injury, uh, you could say like with a knife or a stab, that can cause massive blood loss because of the femoral vessels which are located in the femoral triangle. And this condition is known as the butcher's thigh. Also, you know, the femoral nerve is over here. So damage to the femoral nerve can also cause paralysis of the lower limb. So this shows us the importance of this region. Okay, so this concludes with today's uh, discussion, which was on the um, anterior aspect of the thigh. This was a summary of the gross anatomy of the anterior aspect of the thigh. And after listening to today's topic, I'm sure you should be able to identify these muscles which are present over here in the anterior aspect of the thigh. So I'm going to give you a few seconds and you can think about these muscles. One, two, three, four, five. Four and five are the ligaments. The rest are the muscles, number seven and number six. So that's the answer key and you can uh, look at that again. And here is the blood supply of the anterior aspect of the thigh, which you should also be able to identify. These are the main blood vessels present in this region. So that's the answer key over there for you. And you can also do that later. These are the books from which this lecture was prepared. And I hope this lecture was helpful. If this uh, video lecture, this uh, short session on anatomy of the thigh region of the anterior spec was helpful for you, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Anatomy Mentor. You can do that by simply pressing on my picture, which is going to appear at the end of this video. And thank you for your time and uh, happy studying. Stay happy and stay Sharp. Take care. Allah Hafiz.